All right, hello folks. This is a quick tutorial for my students just to remind them to use multi-tracking when putting together production in Premiere Pro. It's too easy to just put different sounds on the same audio track. It leads to complications when you're trying to mix and make your finished product sound professional. I've got a little piece that I've been putting together. Uh, visually, oh, it's getting there. I had a little bit of a um, mess around with the warping to try and steady a bit when I'm walking along with a gimbal. It's too rough, so I put some um, some warping in and it's come out a little bit drunk. So I need to work on that, but just um, turn a blind eye to that for now because it's about the audio. In this project, I filmed bits of my back garden and I'm talking about the appearance of a flower. Nothing significant, but it would do for this exercise. And in this project, I've used four tracks of audio. Now, when you open a project in Premiere, by default, it gives you three tracks. And what I'm trying to do is encourage my students and all of you to use the multi-track facility in Premiere so you've got maximum control over mixing your audio. What I've actually got here is on this track one here, I've got a piece of ambience that I've got from freesound.org. I'll be crediting to these in the notes, by the way. So have a look below if you want to know where they came from. You can download these for free. Uh, some dialogue that I put together. I'll try not to play it too many times because it will drive you potty. Got some music that I put together. Um, I did that in Logic. So just a little bit of piano music. <laughs> Little simple motif, it suits the tranquil scene. So, if you use original music, then you've uh, got no copyright issues, have you? And also, in my last track here, I've got another piece of ambience from freesound.org. Again, I'll credit that. So, this is kind of countryside ambience, this is like a trickling stream. There's no stream in my garden, I'm trying to give you the false impression my garden's better than it is. So, what's the purpose of this? Well, when you get uh, Premiere Pro open for the first time it will give you three tracks of audio and if you don't realize you can actually right click on the audio and add track there you go I've added another audio track there I don't need it I'll take it away again in a minute um, and you can just move the audio around onto these different tracks all right so rather than have side by side dialogue sound effect um, ambience all on the same track giving yourself a mixing nightmare because they're all gonna be different levels Put them all on separate tracks and then you can use this wonderful piece of kit. I just go up my left hand side to where you edit all the effects and all that gizmo. It's the audio track mixer. All right, that doesn't come up when you open Premiere for the first time. You have to go to Window and select it. You get the audio clip mixer as standard. Audio clip is a funny old thing. Audio clip mixer, it basically allows you to mix the clip up and down while it's playing and then the fader switches off. It's, I used it for a while and I thought, well, what's that all about? Uh, but now I've found this, I'm much happier. So this is like a standard mixer, really. Uh, let's have a quick look at this. You've got faders for each channel. I've just added audio two. I don't need that. I'm going to take it away again. Um, and there we go. Ambience, dialogue, music, ambience two, and master. You've got panning. You can actually plug in effects of these as well. But um, I mean, this is where it really ought to bridge out to audition because. Uh, it's not great this system here for example i would want to put some compression on that dialogue uh, but if i plug it in here you know it, this is all it gives me it doesn't give me the full graphic user interface so i have to go through each setting and fiddle on this tiny little control so first of all enable it and you set the values of the mouse going come on come on oh there we go it's on yeah and then you've got to have the next setting you get no meters doesn't tell you what it's doing so not a big fan of that uh, to be fair. Audition does it much better, so you can bridge out to Audition. I'm going to stay in Premiere for the time being. But with the faders and the panning, it gives you maximum control only if you put one sound per track into Premiere. So if you've got two characters with two lots of dialogue, don't put both the dialogues on the same track. Of course, if they come and going, you know, question answer, question answer, put the two dialogues on two tracks because it's likely to be the same. You can process them uniquely for that character. But here I've got one lot of dialogue and it's got its unique track dialogue. The two ambiences are different, so they are on two different tracks. And also the music just loops there, so that's the same, even though it's split, that's actually the same bit of audio looped. If you've got sound effects, bring them into another track. If you've got one which is a door slamming and one which is a bell ringing, put them on two different tracks. It will give you more control. 
you can add endless tracks to this and you end up with um, 10, 15, 20 channels across your mixer where you can simply just balance the faders out and pan left and right. So what I've done here is actually I've kept everything pretty central. I want the dialogue in the center really, I want the ambience in the center because it's spread, it's stereo anyway, it's spread across the spectrum. Um, but the second ambience, the river, I want to give the impression it's over there. So I panned it to the right. So that's, that adds a little bit of space and dimension to the production. You can't do that without putting it on its own unique track. So really this is pretty much done. I do just want to add some compression to the dialogue because it, it needs it and ready to, to punch through. So just remind my students how to do that as well while I'm here. So you find that under audio effects, amplitude and compression. There's, there's a single band compressor there. I like the one in dynamics because it's laid out in front of you. Uh, go to effects controls, make sure you've got the, the piece that you want to edit selected. It should have popped in. There we go, there's dynamics. Click on edit and you get the full graphic user interface, GUI. It's the compressor one in the middle. There's a gate and expand on this as well. I just want the compressor, so I switched it on. Um, and I can silently, without the invitation. Okay, you can see the game reduction there. One morning to bring joy to all those who saw it. Okay, I just need to go back and check it again. Basically what I've done there is that I have pushed down the peaks of this bit of dialogue by what it looks like around about 8 to 10 decibels by reducing the threshold, which means that at minus 33.2 decibels the compressor kicks in. It kicks in this quickly and then it's compressed it at this ratio, this amount. And the makeup gain, well you need to make it up basically what you've lost, so um, let's go for about 10 decibels. There, let's see what that sounds like. Silently, without invitation, the flower appeared one morning to bring joy to all those who saw it. Right, so basically the dialogue now pushes nicely over the top of the music uh, because I've made it fatter, I've made it less spiky, and the, yeah, the full kind of tone of the dialogue is now pushing through. Uh, watch this little attack thing here, because if you have this flat, it will compress the shapes of the words, and it will sound like this. So uh, avoid that, okay? I like a quick release, so that the compressor can recover and compress the next peak neatly. You can sometimes end up with a little bounce in it, so, so watch out. Um, if you don't like it, just give it a nudge up and smooth it off a bit. There we are, so I'm going to get the mixer back up again and show you what this looks like mixed, the whole thing. Terrible piece, but you're just going to forgive that for a moment. Let's... So the music's right down, the original ambience is down a bit. I've put EQ on the second ambience because it's too in your face. Took some bottom end off that. Dialogue I want strong, I want it to punch through. But silently, without invitation, the flower appeared one morning to bring joy to all those who saw it. I decided there to push the piano slightly because now I have compressed that dialogue. It could take a little bit more level for the music, but um, there we go. That's what I've done. Uh, that's how you multi-track. Don't just duplicate things on the same audio track. You won't be able to do this. All right, and this is where you get your professional audio results. And we all know that good audio really does make a moving image production. All right, thanks for watching. Catch up with you soon.